All right, continuing on with our series on the classification of the Lepidoptera, um, we've been progressively narrowing closer and closer to majority of the Lepidopterans so we can do an alphabetic listing of superfamilies. And so we had to get some of the minor groups out of the way. So we went for the first major grouping, which is the Glossata. The majority of Lepidopterans are Glossata, where they have a proboscis rather than chewing mandibles as adults. Um, and that's classified, uh, grouped into Exoporia and Heteroneura. Um, we're moving on to Heteroneura, which are basically the, um, group of moths, the group of leps, um, that also constitute the majority of leps. Um, basically, we're going to get into Dytricia later, which is the majority, majority of leps, about 97% of Lepidopterans are in this group, um, Heteronurians are Lepidopterans where the venation of the hind wing differs from the venation of the forewing. In the other groups, the venation is essentially the same, if there even are major wing veins. And this is grouped into Monotricia and Dytricia. We're going to start with the uh, Monotricia, which are characterized by the females having a single reproductive opening. In the Dytricia, which we'll talk about in the next episode, there are two reproductive openings, one for receiving the sperm and one for um, depositing the egg. In the Monotricians, this is all one opening similar to the cloaca of a chicken or a another bird or reptile, where um, basically poop comes out of the same hole as sperm and eggs or offspring. And this is grouped into several, five um, superfamilies, starting with the Andesinoidea, which has a single family and a single genus. Um, the family Andesinoidea in the genus um, Andesenia, which has three species. They are fairly simple, small moths, then we go to the superfamily Paleophytoidea, um, which has the single family Phaleophytidae, which has a number of genera of relatively small moths that are found mostly in the tropics. Um, just a sampling of them. They are vastly understudied, mostly because the larvae live in concealed feeding guilds and are very difficult to find. Then we have the superfamily Incurvaroidea, which actually is the largest superfamily of this Lepidopteran clade um, of the Monotricians. Um, it contains some of the better studied um, Monotricians, such as the Adelidae, the Incurvaridae, the Cicidocidae, Prodoxidae, um, the Cronopterygidae, which has a single species, Cronopteryx familiella, and then the Heliozidellidae. Then we get into the Nepticuloidea, which has the Nepticulidae, and the um, Apostegidae. And finally, a small but semi-diverse group known as the Tishoroidea, which has just the Tishoroidae, and the Tisharia Day is relatively um, understudied. It's a n fairly new group that is being worked on, and um, its classification is still being resolved by more advanced taxonomers, um, people who are actually collecting and studying these things rather than just researching the information that is already available. And that is basically our rundown of the Monotricia. So stay tuned for the next episode where we talk about the Dytricians and the first superfamily of the Dytricians, which will kind of set the stage for the rest of the series, which again is just an alphabetical drill down of the major LEP superfamilies.